Welcome into Mavericks Today by Chat Sports. I am Harrison Graham here with the latest Dallas Mavericks news and rumors. And uh, we got to talk about uh, the Luka Doncic-Devin Booker beef that took place on Sunday. I'm still salty the Mavs lost that game. And you know Luka's kicking himself after missing that layup late to tie the game. Got to the rack. It was a great move and uh, just couldn't finish the play. But uh, Luka and Book, who uh, don't exactly like each other, uh, got into it a little bit after the game as uh, I think there was a bit of a miscommunication. It seemed like uh, Devin Booker uh, was yelling at the ref that Luka pushed off uh, for an offensive foul. Luka thought that Booker was kind of talking shit to him. So it's kind of hard to know for sure exactly uh, what happened there. You can see them kind of nose to nose there, kind of, you know, getting after it. Just some clean, fun trash talk. Uh, my preferred photo is this one here uh, in Game 7 when Luka Doncic told Devin Booker, I'm your fucking daddy. But, uh... You know, that's neither here nor there. Booker is so soft. I want to get that out of the way. I'm not saying he's right or wrong in this situation, but now Kevin Durant has to save the day in Phoenix. I mean, what an absolute joke that is. But uh, here's um, Luca from Tim McMahon saying, it's a competitive game. It's all good. Next time, just don't wait until there's three seconds left to talk. That's such a good point. Uh, Booker uh, side of things as well. You guys say you don't want everybody to be friendly, friendly. Here you go. We got some smoke. Yeah. Well, you know what, uh, Devin? You can't spread smoke when it comes to the Mavs when you got 50 pieced in your crib in game seven last year uh, by Luca Spencer Dinwiddie and the boys. So uh, I really don't want to hear. I will say this. It, 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 it creates fun uh, for these two teams and for the NBA. I do think that the Suns are probably the Mavs' biggest rival right now. That's kind of what the NBA has become. It's a lot of these short-term rivalries. Obviously, it was Dallas and Miami for a while, but I think it's Dallas and Phoenix. And I you know, look, it was a great game, right? Uh, it's unfortunate Dallas lost because they led for most of this one, but uh, Phoenix just made a few more plays down the stretch. Uh, Luka and Kyrie uh, played really well again. Doncic wasn't super efficient. Uh, but uh, I thought he played pretty well. Obviously, Durant and Booker had great games, so kudos to them. Uh, but I think something is becoming painfully obvious is that the Mavs have to score 130-plus to win. They can't defend, especially in the interior. Uh, it's just not good. So, you know, you're kind of hoping this is a better version of the Dame C.J. Blazers, really, where you just are going to have to outscore people. And – it's possible, but it's very difficult to do night in and night out because especially in the playoffs, at some point you got to get stops. I mean, that's just the bottom line. So, uh, you know, I'm fascinated to see how it goes. I'm fascinated to see where it ends up. I do know this. As of now, the Mavs are the seventh seed. That's not a great place to be uh, because you would have to go win a game in the play-in tournament. So, uh, you know, hopefully the Mavs can avoid that, at least get up to the sixth seed. Uh, but, um a lot still to play for because still it's about, what, 4 through 12 are pretty tight right now. So nothing is a given at this point in time. Now take a guess. Where will the Mavs end up in the Western Conference standings? Type 1 for playoffs, top 6 seed. Type 2 for play they'll be a 7 through 10. Or type 3 for lottery, they will not uh, get uh, into even the play-in. I, I think it's 1 or 2. I don't think the Mavs will plummet so bad that they missed the playoffs but they got some work to do they got to try and string some wins together the win over philly was promising would have been really nice to win this game over phoenix because that would have been a nice two-game bounce back after a bit of a troubling stretch subscribe to us here at mavericks today by chat sports myself and producer coop will keep you guys in the know with everything surrounding this basketball team uh, it's the final stretch leading up to the playoffs so this is the time to subscribe uh, to get in on that playoff uh, discussion. So hit that subscribe button and uh, tell a friend as we continue to grow this channel. Okay, uh, I will say this. Luka and Kyrie, that's trending in a good direction. And as frustrating as it sounds, long term, that's probably a good thing. I know we don't want to think beyond this year, but like, is, you know, as much of red flags or whatever phrase you want to use with the Kyrie trade. Once you made it, you want him long-term. Like, that's reality. Like, you don't make that move for a three-month rental with 24-year-old Luka Doncic. That's just not the case. So, the good news is, is those guys seem to be getting along, and they, they're starting to play well together, too, which that's a positive note. Whether that translates to playoff success this year, 
that remains to be seen. Here's what Luca had to say about his sidekick. He says he was great. I mean, not just today. He's been great ever since the trade. Uh, like I said, we got to get stops, and playing with Kai is so easy, so it helps me a lot. So it's way easier. It's unbelievable the things he does on the court. Some movements I've never seen in my life. I think if I would have to play with somebody, it would be him for sure because those movements and shots are incredible. That's positive. We've never heard Luca talk about this with any other teammate, and maybe that's obvious, right? He's never had a teammate like Kyrie Irving. Uh, obviously, he's played with some good players. He played with Jalen Bronson. He played with uh, Kristaps Porzingis, but Kyrie is a sure fire hall of famer he has not played with someone of that caliber uh so that is the most important thing i don't want to have that lost in the discussion we just get caught up in the here and now because Kyrie is on a one-year deal and you want to see the playoff success again a year after going to the western conference finals so uh that is uh why it's kind of a conflicting situation uh i will say this about Kyrie too uh i have not been a fan how he's conducted himself in the past but so far, so good. I think he seems more at peace. I think there was probably a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff in Brooklyn that he didn't like. Obviously, the whole city vaccine mandate was probably something that weighed him down for a while. So uh, that was something he was not a fan of. That probably, uh, you know, didn't uh, put him in the best of moods during his time up there. Uh, you know, he obviously had has done other things that I don't like, but I'm not here to talk about that. I will say, since coming to Dallas... All good. I mean, nothing's really stood out to me that I haven't liked at this point in time. Here's what Kyrie had to say in terms of his time in Dallas so far. He says, though my journey has not been perfect, I've been through some crazy situations based on things I've done or things that I've said. I believe those situations are avoidable now because I'm in a balanced place emotionally, spiritually, mentally, and physically. It's all been something I've been able to learn, and I'm grateful for that. And look, that's at the end of the day for any of us in life, you just got to learn and continue to grow, right? I mean, and if Kyrie can recognize that and kind of look back and say, yeah, I could have done some things differently, like, hey, you know, nobody's um, uh, nobody's a finished product in terms of a player or a person. So uh, I'm all here for the growth and uh, for the positive vibes and ultimately for the Mavericks, for a player that they hope to re-sign. So, you know, you got 15, 18 games here, whatever it is, playoffs hopefully, and uh, – then, you know, we'll see if he's here long term. And obviously, that's the goal. You don't make that trade if it's not the goal. So uh, I think things are trending in a positive direction on that front. Now, what is the percentage chance that Kyrie re-signs with the Mavs? 1 to 100%. I guess 0 to 100. Uh, I'm going to go like 84. I, I, I am pretty confident he'll re-sign. I can't say above 90, though, because... Teams are going to be interested. I mean, LeBron's going to try and get him to L.A. I think that's uh, pretty clear. But let me know. Give me a percentage chance Kyrie resigns, and we'll see you next time here at Mavericks Today.